Hello, and welcome to another very special episode of the Sales Ops at Demystified podcast. We're joined by Sophia Ulyuk. My pronunciation was great there, right? Yeah, perfect. <laughs> of um, Star. Now, Sophia has been with Star for approximately five years and has kind of risen through the ranks of sales operations to get to director of commercial operations right now. So that's what we're going to be digging into in the next 20 to 30 minutes. So Sophia, welcome to the show. Yep, my pleasure. It's been um, actually eight years already. Eight years? <laughs> eight I got that years. wrong. Yep. Um, but you weren't in, I think I'm correct in saying that you weren't in sales ops when you joined Star, is that right? No, I weren't. I joined Star as sales assistant eight years ago and then eventually grew into sales operations. Got it. And what is... What is the sales assistant role? Is that actually like helping, is that actually selling? Uh, it's not selling. So I was just assisting the sales team with their day-to-day -day productivity, Got which it. included like their management of their calendars, um, making sure the sales force is updated. Um, that's probably where I le learned all the uh, peculiarities of our sales process. Yeah, I mean, I was going to say that kind of sounds like it is sales operations anyway. Would you agree or would you, th would you, yeah. you think that's like a different? Yeah. Okay, cool. So then you have been in sales operations for eight years at Star. Yep. How's the journey been? Um, a roller coaster. <laughs> mm -hmm. um, especially, so when I joined Star, um, we didn't actually have like a sad sales process. We didn't have like best practices mapped and documented. So we were just doing the best that we could. And I think that's eventually how I ended up in sales operations um, at some point where we were trying to make us consistent, make us more productive by looking at what's working and what doesn't. Mm -hmm. um, so at that point, we started building actually like the well-documented, well-structured sales process, which uh, eventually took us some time, um, as well as other things that sales operations do, onboarding of the sales reps, reporting, forecasting, all of that fantastic things that make us more productive, make us more successful. Got it. And how many people in the sales team are you currently supporting? Um, so we have eight sales executives, three business development people, and two customer success people. Got it. And your team is responsible for all of those people? Yes, and also the inside sales reps as well. And how many of those do you have? Twelve. Got it. So 12 inside sales, eight sales executives, three BDRs, and two CS. Um, yep. And in total, four sales operations people. Got it. Awesome. And so do they sit, because I, I, know, I know you're directing commercial operations. So yep. if that, does that mean there's five in total in your team? So four sales ops and you? So commercial operations, it's more known on the market as revenue ops, uh, yep. but we call it commercial operations. So I'm currently running basically three teams, sales operations, inside sales, and marketing. Uh, okay, so you're, you're, you're running the marketing team as in you're like head of marketing as well? Um, head of marketing, I'd say it's like uh, too much. Um, <laughs> I'd say that marketing operations basically. Got it, okay. And so how many people in marketing operations? Um, six. Got it. Um, and so is that the whole of the marketing team or is there more people in the marketing team? There are more people on the marketing team, Got like uh, regional marketing managers. Got it. So I'm trying to understand. So you're basically below you, there is 25 people in sales and success. And there's four people in the sales ops team and then there's six people in the marketing ops team. Yep, but sales executives are not reporting directly to me but to chief commercial officer that i'm eventually reporting to as well got it yeah yeah so so they're not you're not like managing them but you're like responsible for their productivity right yeah of course got it did i miss anyone else there or do we have more people that you're that you're helping no that's it 
Okay, so that's 35 in total. Um, cool. Okay. And so before we move on, I quickly want to understand. So you're in like the sales assistant role. What made you want to like spend more time and dive deeper into the sales operations like world or did that just kind of happen naturally? Um, it happened naturally because I had an interest in making like our sales machine work. Um, and that's, I think, where I ended up right now with commercial operations because sales on their own cannot be kept in vacuum. You need to make sure that they are well aligned with marketing, with inside sales reps, that all the processes are followed. Mm-hmm. We are on the same page. So that's that's eventually how, how it happened. But initially, uh, as I've mentioned already, we... We started building the sales process that would be consistent throughout all geographies that we work um, and that all the commercial like sales salespeople that they are aligned and they follow the same process because a lot is dependent on that given that they are a lot of working with the engineering teams, with the design teams that we have, strategy teams. So you need to make sure that we spend our time right, that we focus on the right efforts, that everyone follows the same process. Got it. Makes sense. Um, I assume you guys are responsible for the data quality in the CRM. Of course. Cool. And what is the current set of sales related tech stack that you guys are using at the moment? Um, At the moment, we are using Salesforce as our CRM. Yep. Uh, we also use uh, Smart Cloud Connect, which is basically a software that lets you sync the activity of the sales reps on a daily basis to Salesforce. So we can cool. actually see what's going on with specific contacts or opportunities. And we use Showpad for onboarding. Cool. Awesome. Um, okay. And then you've already mentioned so far about getting these people productive. So this might be a tricky question, but over your like eight years looking at Star's sales process, what's something that you've done that has like had a big impact on the productivity of just the the various sales teams that you're responsible for? Um, it is a tricky question. And I think the primary answer is you need to understand what you're trying to achieve is like a big question. Why? Why are you doing this and not something else? Mm. Uh, The next level that you are getting into is like, what is it? What's in it for the salespeople that will be affected? So you need to get into their shoes and position it the way that they will understand the benefits. So to give you an example, if we look at the sales cycles and compare if someone is going off the process and someone follows the process, you can definitely see like the differences in between. So what you actually do, you try, you are trying to communicate to a sales rep, which is like off the road, that if you follow the sales process, you do you do this and that, you will get to your end point and your result much faster based on the results that you see from other people so communicating this to them and making sure that they understand the value behind what they are being asked to do is like extremely important in my opinion got it so making it clear to them what they can gain from doing this thing that you want them to do yes how do you on that note how do you like maintain and keep good relationships with the salespeople? Like you just walk around the sales area of the office and buy them donuts or like how does that work um unfortunately i don't have like um a luxury of like being face to face with them on a daily basis because we are global and majority of our sales reps are in our uh, locations Mm -hmm. but i think the relationship itself is based on trust between us as a sales operations and them as our customers primarily because we are serving them uh, and we are helping them be successful. So that's how it all begins. It's also in continuous communication with them, understanding what are the pain points that they are facing right now, understanding what is eating like majority of their time in terms of like 
operational things where we can help them um, go and hunt and be in the field more time versus like filling in the CRM, which we can automate and find the other software uh, and other ways how to improve their productivity. Got it. Um, you mentioned using Showpad for onboarding. Do you have any kind of tips or like strategies that have worked to onboard fast? Um, I don't know. Um, we, um, I am myself proud of what my team has built so far in terms of onboarding program. Um, it's, it's threefold, I'd say. Uh, we use Showpad for the online piece. So when the new sales rep starts, um, he or she goes through the online onboarding in Showpad that consists of several modules where they learn about the company, our culture, mission, values, uh, our services, um, our successful projects and uh, customers, as well as the overview of different sales processes that they will be facing on a day-to-day -day basis. Yep. Once that piece is completed, we do an on-site um, uh, onboarding here in our key delivery center in Ukraine. That's where they actually meet the majority of people that they will be working with, different heads of departments, which lets them build relationship on the first place with those people, as well as better understand our value proposition and what differentiates us from other consultancy companies out there. Um, and then the third piece is the actual sales training on value selling methodology. Uh, we have been working with value selling associates for a long time already. We found their methodology really resonating with us. Um, and we continue doing that. But I think the most important piece, because you dump all that information in one month, um, and as studies show, 60 to 70% of that information is forgotten, um, we do a refresher sessions each quarter, which also include a refresher sessions with value selling, where we review the deals that are either stuck in the funnel and the sales reps has no idea how to move them forward, what he needs to do, or, or some strategic deals that we have in the funnel. And the other piece is a refresher sessions on like our value proposition, recent cases that we've completed um, or projects, or uh, if anything has been added to our services that we haven't done before, so they know what they are actually selling. Got it. I have a quick question about on the value selling methodology. Could you just like sum that up in, in like a couple of sentences? Um, value selling methodology. I'm not a sales rep myself, but I went through <laughs> a few of those sessions. Uh, it is based on basically understanding um, the pain points of the prospect and mapping that on our value and making sure that what we are trying to sell is really will bring value to the to the prospect. Got it. So discovering what their challenges or problems are and then mapping that to the the good things or the value that your product provides yeah. and yeah. then making sure you only sell if you can actually help solve the problem. Yeah, exactly. Understanding kind of the end game, what, a, what the prospect is trying to achieve with their pain point or need and delivering the best quality and the best value we can, if we can do it. Got it. Awesome. Moving on now to the sales forecasting process. Are you involved with that? Yes. And how, how's that currently working? Um, we are continuously improving it, but right now it's kind of a mix of various practices that we've learned so far. Um, we forecast based on our existing funnel of uh, customers. Basically, we call it an order book or um, existing, existing bucket. And we also include the deals which are in the uh, bottom of the funnel. 
uh, which we believe will close. So that's on the sales plate. After that, we adjust that forecast with some probabilities based on the historical data. So for example, if in 2019, we've seen that out of the deals that are pending customer decision on the proposal, only 20% of those deals close throughout the year, then we adjust the probability of our forecast for that specific bucket by 20%. Got it. Okay. So you have your kind of existing bucket and these are clients that are currently paying you and you assume yep. will keep paying you. And then you look at all deals um, that might close and then yep. also adjust based on previous data. Yep. On historical oh, data. Yeah. Makes sense. Um, so and- we have... A- we are proud that our accuracy with the forecast for the past two years has been ranging from 98 to 103%, which we think is pretty like spot on. Mm-hmm. Who, who's involved in that forecasting process? Um, sales people themselves, um, sales operations. We have a person that is working um, tightly with sales reps to make sure that the data is uh, in there, Um, as well as our chief commercial officer who is like doing the final review of what's being forecasted and making sure that we have no stones left unturned in terms of what he knows we might close in the nearest future. Got it. And if you you could only measure one revenue-related or commercial-related metric, um, for the rest of your career, which would you choose? Oh, God. <laughs> um, that's really tough question. Um, I don't know. Time to hit in first quota, first quota hit for mm, a sales rep. Um, so that- I think I find this metric really interesting for the reason that um, – You have to rely on a lot of things for that specific person, like the geography that he or she is working, the experience that they had, and like making sure that it also shows you if your onboarding process is working. So taking the time that the sales rep, the newcomer, um, has hit his first quota 100%, makes you like evaluate whether it's the right person or not as well as like as i mentioned whether the onboarding process is working or we can fix some things which make them ramp up faster got it so you you can basically tell if you hide the right person but you can also tell how effective you are at training them so those are the two variables yep um makes sense awesome and then final question is who have influenced you the most uh, in your career related to sales or revenue operations? Hmm. That's even a tougher question than KPIs. <laughs> I think the person who helped me grow where I am right now and like supported me throughout the way, shared the knowledge is our CEO, uh, Michael, who I've been working with for those eight years. Hmm. Um, that's where I learned majority of what I know right now. And Mm -hmm. also he was always focusing me in the right direction where we need to invest time and effort right now. Um, so yeah, out of sales operations, uh, community, I'm a big fan of Hillary from Zoom. Um, we've met once at Opstars in San Francisco. Mm -hmm. I was hugely impressed with her experience as well as she, as she tackles sales operations. So I think mm-hmm. those two people are like my my favorites. Got it. And one extra question. How many people were there at Star when you joined eight years ago? Uh, at Star, um, I think around 250 in total. Got it. So it's, it's what, just over tripled in the, in the eight years. Yeah, we are right now at 750. Got it. Yeah, nice. That's really cool. An amazing journey. Yeah. Any more? As I mentioned, roller coaster. <laughs> and before we finish, 
I'm going to, is there like anything else that you've learned in the eight years that you'd like to hand down to someone who's more junior uh, in sales operations? I think what I personally believe in is that sales operations is really challenging, but it's also exciting role. And in this role, you cannot take anything for granted. And um, I think when I've talked to um, cluster guys, uh, I've mentioned the analogy of sales operations, sales process as a bunch of Lego bricks. That's your sales process. You cannot take it for granted. You have to continuously see where you need to build up, which like stores or pieces you need to remove. And that what makes you successful and that what eventually will make your sales reps and your company successful. So got it. Well, I have two pa- one and a half pages of notes here. So here are the, the things that I picked out. I like your three, like it's a very clear three part onboarding with the on site to get those relationships at the start, but then also having the refresher sessions. Um, the building a relationship of trust with salespeople so you can. So they'll believe you when you go to them and be like, actually, this way is going to help you hit your goals. Um, yep. And then finally, yeah, the the kind of depth of the time to hitting first quota metric where, um, and your point that not only does it show you how good your onboarding is, but actually will teach you about how good you are at hiring at the same time. Um, yep. So Sophia, thank you so much for coming on. Thank you for inviting me. It was a pleasure and I hope it was useful for the rest of the sales ops community. We are doing great things.